Hi there, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and very happy to be here tonight. We have a very interesting guest that I'm very pleased to have on my show, Sherry Edwards, and she was named Scientist of the Year in 2001 for her work in bioacoustic biology, and uh, I have her bio on my site under Whistleblower Radio for those of you who are uh, listening and, and want to read her bio. And just briefly, it looks like she's a pioneer in the study of human bioacoustic biology. She's done 30 years of research, and that research is being used at the Institute of Bioacoustic Biology in Albany, Ohio. Currently, she and her team at Sound Health are using the human voice and associated frequencies to help clients resolve health issues, and the technology she brings to the stage is cutting edge. For this purpose here, why don't we actually have you continue the introduction yourself, Sherry. I always feel that people can best introduce themselves. So why don't you give a brief overview of how you got into this field of research and and some of your special abilities in that area and then what you're currently involved in. Thank you, Carrie. It's an honor to be here. I would like to preface an introduction to myself by saying that everything that man does starts with an idea from the mind, from consciousness, from imagination, and it's only science that comes in and substantiates our imagination and concepts. So at the present, I am director of the Sound Health um, Institute and also the Institute of Bioacoustic Biology, they kind of go together. And there we stick a microphone in front of people and we help them deal with their issues, whether it's personality or health issues. This all started from the concept that, well, not the concept, the just fact, the reality that my ears are constructed differently from most humans. I hear sounds that other people don't, much like dog whistles, but not in that same range. So a cochlea is this bone behind your ear, and it allowed me to hear things from people and animals and trees and carrots that other people didn't, and I didn't realize other people couldn't do this. It's called an autoacoustic emission, and there's a sound coming out of your ear all the time. I've said it for years. It's been proven now by John Hopkins University. And that sound and the interruptions in that sound, if you can imagine a sound coming out of your ear like a megaphone and the waves get bigger and bigger and bigger and as other people speak and as you hear other sounds, the interruptions from your own waves that you're sending out your ear provide you meaning from past experience. So we look at that interpretation from hearing the voice and you hearing your own voice and other people's voices and look at that in terms of a holographic representation of your brain. Now, that sounded like a lot and it really has put me in a precarious position of being esoteric on one hand of hearing sounds like Pythagoras and dealing with the information that um, the Templars dealt with. I didn't know how else to bring that up. The Templar information of healing herbs and sounds being sent down through DNA. So that's the esoteric side of this. And there's been a book written about it called Healing Sounds by Jill Madsen, where they talk about where all of this came from and relate it to those ancient sounds. And then there are other uh, articles and videos that come up and show the scientific side of what we do. For instance, one of the videos is called Miracles of Non-Medicine, and that's on our site, a free download for people. They want to go looking at soundhealthoptions.com under downloads. It's under Secret Stash, and there's two free videos there. One is called Miracles of Non-Medicine. And, for instance, one doctor, Dr. Russ Rudy, came to us, and it last ditch effort that his doctor sent him to us as um, a last resort because he had MS and he said uh, you're going to die uh, go home and get all of your affairs in order and so he came to us uh, seeking hope of some kind 
and we looked at his vocal print, and it, we only need 30 seconds, and went on to compare it to our database, and he didn't have MS. He had an injury to his spine that was causing him to lose nerves, the deterioration of his nerves, from his waist down. So it took us and him, because the body heals itself, from November to the next May to help him regenerate the nerves from his waist down. And now he's out of his scooter and wheelchair and back up and walking. And he ha is having some troubles with stiff man syndrome, which we're going to deal with. But he's back to work. He was an emergency room doctor. The conventional medicine diagnosed him wrong. And But their lab tests now prove that with the sounds that we provided to him to entrain his brain, reintroduced the nerve tissue to his body, and he regrew it. So from the very esoteric of my being able to hear these sounds and reproduce them, what ancients would call your signature sound, to the very scientific piece of this so the blending so having one foot in each side I really don't belong to either side but sort of try to bring those together for one help people with their health and look at the idea of frequencies as the medicine of the future which AT&T is substantiated and we also have software that will help people find themselves and that's free. Uh, it's a personality profiler, um, which we do for people when we're on the air with them. We also want to expose others who are not telling the truth. We just did an expose on Chris Christie and did one on Dylan Davies, the guy who was on 60 Minutes and was disgraced by the way he's telling the truth. Uh, and 60 Minutes and whoever was trying to do him in did a great disservice and with the things coming out about Benghazi you now can see what they did they didn't want that to come out so we help ex out people expose the lies and then we have a series of computer programs that we give away so we want to provide tools and solutions for what's going on in the world we just did a two day free class public class for about 70 people about PTSD and we were helping train them to help the victims and the families and the support for the people coming back in droves from the war. There's about a half a million of them now suffering from PTSD. So we chose that particular thing that we wanted to provide the tools and solutions to the public. The next one we're doing, we're going to tackle uh, the radiation exposure from Fukushima. So that one's coming up in February. So that's sort of the gamut of what we do. Okay, uh, very good and fascinating work. Uh, I was wondering, you just spoke about uh, Benghazi and uh, referenced, I, was it CNN? And I just wondered if, I don't see that listed on your site. Um, is there somewhere where you put this information that you you said you did an analysis and, and so on? Where, where was the, would that in, information be? Probably under profiles. This particular one about Benghazi is named Benghazi Tragedy. And we did a video and an audio, a radio show about it. They could look on the front of our website, lower left-hand side, and it will say Benghazi Tragedy. But we looked at Hillary Clinton. We looked at Rice. And we looked at Obama. And then at the Dylan uh, Davies guy who said he was there when it was happening and that it really was a terrorist issue and it was very organized and what was going on and they uh, disgraced uh, I think it was her name was Laura um, she was the interviewee on 60 Minutes and they attacked her and her producer and forced them, I think they resigned or took a leave of absence or something, because somebody came in, government or whoever, and said that this Dylan Davies wasn't telling the truth. And now we find out he is, after the last two days of uh, hearings and what they found out about Benghazi, 
that Obama and Hillary really knew about it, and we announced that back in December in response to this 60-minute debacle. Okay, uh, very interesting. Uh, well, we can look into that at a, at a later date, and, and, and I will be fascinated to read that information. Uh, okay, so Sherry, um, you, you have special ability with your voice, and I wonder if you also are clairaudient at all. I am. When I hear things and people speaking, uh, and I say things because carrots and trees and grass and all that talk also, you can hear frequencies from them. And by trial and error, I have learned that the note of E um, says that their words are very clear. But if they're speaking um, with a deep, dark blue, then they're hiding something. So we've computerized all of this about what is going on with people. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, um now, have you also perhaps uh, met other people that have these abilities? Some people in my family have them, but they don't necessarily have the deformed cochlea and the vocal apparatus to not only hear the sounds, but to duplicate them. And we first came to the attention of the government because my voice could erase reel-to-reel -reel tapes, and they were very concerned that if that information got out, there'd be a problem. So I'm telling my age and how long ago this was. I think it was in the 80s that we were working uh, with the government, and they had us do people's voices that they thought were spies. And we were doing it from me listening to them, and we knew that we needed to invent, create a computer program that would do the same thing. So that's what we put together so that we could provide it to everybody just like the army project that we did with PTSD we really started out doing traumatic brain injury so that they could see on the front line who really had a brain injury from these acoustic blasts so that they didn't have to send them back to the hospital and, and get spinal taps and blah 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 and we were able to help them identify nine frequencies that these people would exhibit if they were seriously hurt and out of that, look at PTSD and then share that software with anybody who wants to test their family members. I think, you know, and I'm going to prove this, I'm looking at the vaccinations that they give the soldiers, and I think all of those vaccination at once is attacking their immune system, and it's causing them not to be able to use certain nutrients and then they come back and there's no money for them. They take away their pension. They decrease it. Um, the Army just needs to be called to order on this is what you're doing to these people. I'm a whistleblower, but I have proof behind me because I can look at these guys' vocal prints and say, you are lying or you did this or here is this measles shot you gave them and it caused this and this shot caused narcolepsy and so we're trying to provide all of this to the public. Anybody who wants these um, softwares, they're on our site for them to download and use along with an instruction textbook and an instruction video. So we're trying to cover as much territory as we can so we can all be whistleblowers. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay. Well, uh, have you... In other words, you said you helped the military, I guess, uh, back many years ago. Have you been currently helping them? Um, if I was helping them on a project now, I don't think I could talk about it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but, but we are doing a very large product, project on radiation exposure and things that are being covered up there. Okay. We have been are you going to, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, are you going to go to Japan or are you going to meet with people that have been from, you know, exposed to it in Japan or are you going to go, you know, further away like, um, you know, America or, in other words, we, where would you be? We have four practitioners that we have trained that are in Japan and there are several people here 
who were in Japan at the time that we have access to. So yes, we're putting all of that together and hopefully in about 10 people we can break a code of something that we need and then give those people back the frequencies. Um, think of this in terms of the government threatening us with some kind of pandemic, this flu pandemic. If we have three people, I can break a code in three people, ten will give us a great opportunity to see what really the problem is. By way of frequency, everything is frequency. Frequency is da da da. Flu is frequency. Measles are frequencies. Pollutants are frequencies. Toxins are frequencies. So if the government starts threatening us or just covertly uh, bombarding us with some kind of flu, we can quickly come together as a group, and we do have an underground group called Guardians of the People. They can come together, we'll figure out the frequencies, and we'll provide that back to the community so that we have control, not the government. Okay, That's and when, I, you say, when you say you're going to provide the frequencies back to the people, and how are you going to do that? Just like music, ambient sound, a, a low frequency a speaker that will entrain brain waves and have the brain do what it ought to have done in the first place. I just think our bodies are so polluted with bad air, bad sex, bad, bad food, GMOs, um, whatever that we've become so dampened that we can't fight things off. And so the idea one is to get people healthy and, and help them stay healthy and give them the tools to do that. Then next, if they are bombarded, if they are attacked, then this is the way that we, the people, have the control. The whole idea for me is I know I can't fight the government. Uh, they're bigger, better, faster than I am in all ways. So what I really want to do is just create a new system of health that will just go around them and share it with people and people can afford what we get what we share with them because a lot of it's free uh yes they have to buy a microphone and if i had the money i'd buy that for them but we want to put all of this in the hands of the people health for the people by the people and just move the government health care system over here someplace because we are so accurate and so efficacious that people come to us in droves, we have more people than we can possibly see. We need trainers. We need more clinicians. But Pfizer Pharmaceuticals took some of our information and put it out in a um, an article. We had turned a proposal into the National Institute of Health at their request. So we thought, hey, we're a shoe in So they came back and said, nah, I didn't even make it to first base. But less than a year later, there's Pfizer Pharmaceuticals with our information. And just like I can't fight the government, I can't fight uh, the pharmaceutical company. So I just put out a press release that said Pfizer Pharmaceuticals is following in the footsteps of a small research center in southern Ohio. And GlaxoSmithKline now has put out information. I just think they're following us, and I'm going to use their criticism uh, to get us publicity to get us known, you know, your enemies will tell you quicker what you're doing wrong. And I just turn it on them and use it to my benefit. You know, Buckminster Fuller said, in order to change something, don't struggle to change the existing model. Create a new model and make the old one obsolete. And if you absolutely. look at our... Pardon? I'm sorry, I have said Absolutely. <laughs> If you if you look at our videos and some of the things that we can do with retrieving uh, the lost capabilities of people who've had strokes, you can see nothing touches us with what we can do and get people back talking and get their muscles moving. Um, gout, nobody can touch us. I think our record's 26 seconds and for helping people with gout pain. We try to look at things that conventional medicine can't do anything about. I was just approached this evening about our approach uh, to cancer, and we have found four different approaches to cancer that the cancer institutes and research people sort of look at, but they really skirt around it. 
and we have reversed all the cancers that have come to us except one that wasn't really a cancer it was a nest of worms in his bowel that they misdiagnosed as cancer so there's some things that we're learning all the time we're in research mode here's another one that I think is coming big time with Obamacare there is they allow an irrationing of medications for people over certain age, ages last year in March in the USA Today there was an article uh, can't remember what section maybe the money section about a woman that went to the hospital and they decided not to give her her insulin because they were allowed because they were low on insulin and because she was over a certain age she didn't get hers her they wouldn't allow her family to bring it in I think that's absolutely despicable there's not a word bad enough despicable is the worst one I could find so we went to work and we found a way to give people insulin by frequency and if that gets out to the companies that make insulin they'll come after us and my only hope of getting this out there and ahead of that is to share it with people like you who are well known and want to do something and want to bring out all the information because if we can get this to the public if we can teach it to them share it with them that won't happen again because we have a machine that makes insulin by frequency and yes it has to be monitored and and really limited in some ways but we're able now to control people's blood sugar and their blood sugar receptors their insulin receptors by frequency we have been able to create a math matrix of your vocal print and if 2 and 2 is 17 we know you have an immune problem we are so far ahead years and years ahead of where conventional medicine is we can provide them the pieces that they have missing and somebody needs to pay attention to this and the way I see it you either let people know from the top down which is give it to the pharmaceutical or the government and I just refuse to do that so I'm out here trying to give it to the people bottom up so that we the people control our health you know whoever controls health controls our quality of life and I am determined it's going to be the individual okay well uh, that's very good to hear and uh, and and you're obviously doing some wonderful work um, I'm wondering if uh, how you're able to in other words have you thought of putting out um, albums you know like record albums of these kinds of healing frequencies that sort of thing several people have done that who take our classes and the problem is that in order for the body to heal itself we must provide it analog sound your body perceives and heals its own self by analog so we have to provide the things back to analog if you want the brain to listen you have to provide it in the way that the ba brain perceives incoming information and it perceives it as frequency yes, but yeah perceives it as analog frequency and it perceives it on very subtle ranges that a CD cannot um, provide like if we want to look at your genetics we have to fool the brain using hearing level frequencies into creating a frequency that will control the magnetic potential of your body and the magnetic potential and the bioelectric potential is where you get the reversal of things like down syndrome and those kinds of things and you can't do that with a CD okay and well um, I, I actually have a, a, a friend who's a musician who talks about this to some degree and uh, my understanding is that there are ways of getting uh, I believe analog back onto CDs it's just that they don't do it that way normally um, so it's, be it's because recordings have become sort of um, 
it's the de- recording process has become somewhat uh, degraded over over time as we sort of went to these different kinds of uh, ways of when we had records that you know you played on a turntable. Um, I think that was a more authentic sound, if I understand it correctly. And I don't know, um, you know, I'm not I'm not technically up to speed on all of this, but I'm just throwing that out for your group who are investigating these kinds of things. That you could talk to people who are who make records, who know about there is a distinction between um, a very good recording versus what does go onto CDs nowadays. I would think it'd be wonderful if this could be done on a CD, but we also have to be very careful about what's put out there because left and right brandedness has to be considered and the sound that will take away pain for one person will provide pain to the other. So people have to be individually looked at. Very few things are consistent. Okay, very interesting. Uh, We'll be right back with Sherry Edwards. Thank you. Hi there, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Sherry Edwards about her bioacoustics and her organization that is doing some very interesting work in this area and healing people using sound and frequencies. So we were just talking about how, how people are, are very different and that you you know what, what might be healing for one might not be healing for another. And that's uh that's, of course, something that, that would be something of a liability for somebody who wanted to try to possibly put things out that might be healing across the board. I'm wondering if, uh, if some of these, the, these kinds of, uh, I, I don't know, um, I'm forgetting what they're called. Um, gosh, uh, the, these, I, I don't know, these sounds that help, help people sleep. Are you familiar with uh, what I mean when I say that? Yes, melatonin would make people sleep, but that's also all in vocal range, and that's great and good with healing music. When we look at something like back pain, though, what we want to do is release the tension from the little teeny back muscles, and those muscles are nearly below normal hearing, and they certainly would be distorted on a piece of music. Uh, it would take some very large, large, large organ and the very lowest note that nobody could even uh, get to by voice to put that on a background. And when you have a CD, you have a, a sort of a carrier wave, like you and I talking on the phone uh, from here to California, it would need a carrier wave, a booster to make it Move So just like our diaphragm, when we're in the same room together, projects that sound, on a CD, there is this sort of carrier wave, is the only word I can think of that it is. And right now, it's 44K. And when you look at that frequency, it's the same frequency um, for prostate cancer. And so you see now a big surge in young men who have prostate cancer. Now they're changing it over to, I think, a 94K maybe, and that's a frequency that um, creates leukemia. So we were doing experiments with it, and nobody would touch it, and this one woman woman said, I'll I'll do it, I'll do it. She was in Spain, and she ended up with leukemia. You know, everybody was afraid to even look at it, um, examine it. But when we look at analog sound, and you do get some effect with digital, but when we look at analog sound, that's what changes your DNA. That's what opens a receptor site. That's what reconstitutes a muscle. Now, we've tried to build machines that'll do it, um, but they have such a loud motor sound behind them that it just drowns everything out. So what we do is teach people to trick the brain into making sounds that it needs. And that's one of the things that we train people professionally to do. It's called sound presentation. It gives the information back. We can give somebody the frequency of a broken bone. That's pretty consistent. 
the frequencies to get rid of back aches pretty insist pretty consistent relax the muscles consistent muscles and bones are pretty consistent even with animals and across uh, people but when you get to something like diabetes or parkinson's everybody has it for a different reason we just did a study on parkinson had like 60 parkinson's people in here most of them didn't even have parkinson's they were misdiagnosed. They had Lyme's disease, uh, tetanus problems. Um, oh, I can't remember all the rest of them that was an issue, but probably three or four out of those 60 had Parkinson's. They don't know what to do with these people with deteriorating muscles, so they just, oh, that's Parkinson's or that's ALS or whatever. Well, ALS is a death sentence, but when we can look in the computer and take a picture of your voice and say, oh, this is Lyme disease, that's reversible. And that's what we're doing in giving people hope, but gathering data at the same time. So people can have heart disease or high blood pressure or diabetes or high cholesterol, all for very different reasons. And we're able to look at the reasons and not guess and provide your medical provider, your wellness provider back management reports of what's really going on. And one of the things that we're finding right now is Fukushima and all this radiation is really causing havoc with cellular communication and that in turn is a big cause of muscle breakdown. We're looking at GMOs for their disturbance, and you can go look at the patent on this, their disturbance of methionine and glutathione, and that's causing the body's inability to use trimethyl and dimethylglycine, so muscles are getting stiff, and people are getting arthritis at a younger age. But, you know, it's, it's mankind destroying himself by thinking that he knows more than nature. Think of these Oh, I almost cussed. Of uh, these dumb people who say that we should feed our babies from a bottle because what they created in the lab is superior to breast milk. I just want to kick somebody. How stupid. Okay, well, um, so, but what I was actually asking you, and, and I appreciate all of that information, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, I was thinking of hemisync. Have you heard of, of hemisync? I have, and Robert Monroe. Right, I, right. And I went to see Robert Monroe very early on, and I said, there is an issue. Left brain um, people can take the kinds of sound you produce in a vocal range, but right brain people want their sound a little different because they hear this leftover sound. And the person who wrote the Hemisync music for years and years, Alan Phillips, uh, he's not with him anymore. He's an attorney now. But uh, he and I talked about this for ages. And I tried to give all of my stuff away to Robert Monroe when he was alive because I didn't know what to do with it. My degrees are in education. I teach teachers how to teach. you know. And this was just a talent. And I didn't know what to do with it. And his answer to me was, you know, we made $6 million last year. I don't really need your stuff. But when his wife got sick, he called me in, and, and we were able to try to help her. But hemisync, for instance, will give you 100 in one ear and 106 in the other. And that won't work because you're trying to create six cycles per second. And six cycles per second will not divide into 100 and 106 evenly. They need to use 96 and 102 in order for the brain really to create that six cycles per second. And you also have to consider left and right braindedness because they're opposites. For left brain people, sound and color are opposites. And for right brain people, sound and color are the same. So you have to consider how people are going to be using the sound. It would be very difficult to use something commercial um and do this maybe for broken bones yes um maybe for uh back pain or 
-hmm. relax. We we couldn't sell it as back pain. You'd have to say for the stress of back pain because the FDA is going to be on your butt. We did a demonstration for them for trigger fingers and stiffness in fingers. And the guy they brought in, it took just a few seconds, and he was stumbling around because his finger worked now. And he said, the, 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 "This is uh, this is magic." And the other people uh, uh, calmed him down. You know, don't say that. And they told us not to share this with people because I would be a laughing stock to say we could. Take your vocal print and see what's going on and then give you the frequencies back and relieve your disease. And I was so stupid at that point that I believed them. And they wanted that little box. Uh, my attorney gave them one, but they've never done anything to it because with it because we didn't give them the information on how to run the chip. Inside, and if they try to break open the chip or read it, it'll destroy itself. But you've got people like um, Pfizer out there saying, we can predict uh, Parkinson's by vocal prints. Yes, that's what we turned into the National Institute of Health, and they got so far and they couldn't go any further because we didn't give them the rest of the pieces, the rest of the matrix. So they sold it out very shortly after they did it, I think that was 2004 they did that, and they sold that to Cog State in Australia, and I've never heard anything from Cog State about it. There was one guy out there who said he could predict Parkinson's by telephone, but people have such inaccurate telephones, I don't think that worked either, and he sort of fell into the woodwork. But we need to use a good microphone, individually assessed, then put it into the computer programs. We look at it to six decimal points, and we ask the computer to look at nutrition and genetics and toxins, and it will come up with a number and say, this is where we need to go. I did your vocal print, and you're looking pretty good there. Um, <laughs> okay, you don't well, have, uh, go ahead. You don't have anything... Um, serious going on just a few little things but um your vocal print there you get a score and your score is barely three and you have to have a four or more to even be considered that you have some issues there are some issues um in yours there's a few immune well i don't want to say that on the air we'll <laughs> talk about that after the show <laughs> well i appreciate that uh all right, well, uh, doesn't it matter also the quality of the so-called recording that you're using? Yes, we... Diagnosis? Well, we, uh, we can't say that word diagnosis. We evaluate. Your evaluation? We have, yeah, we have people use a free program called Audacity, the 2.2 version. There is a booklet on our website, soundhealthoptions.com. If they will go to Downloads, and there's a radiation software download. And then every month we have a bonus software. The bonus software is PTSD this month. But within that link, there is a 72-page booklet that they can download. And it gives them directions on how to do this for themselves. And if they run into trouble, there's tutors that will help them. There are groups that form that have formed and will help them. There are videos that they can watch that are all free that they can watch and look at any of this. In the, okay. for instance, uh, in, what, I, what I'm wondering though, sorry to interrupt you here, but because I think people will also be wondering this, is that uh, when you're diagnosing, and how, what are you basing it on? I, I think what you said originally was you needed at least three cases or something of this nature to, because uh, in other words, how do you know it's going to be one disease from another disease? How how does this information tell you that? Well, we have done so many, let's say, cancer patients that we know what's consistent through those. But we're talking about two different things here. If we need three to ten people to break a code, let's say a community is being poisoned, we can break the code of what they're being poisoned with and then create an antidote. 
But for people individually, we usually take two vocal prints and then compare them with them talking about something mundane and then what they want us to look at. So we don't need three prints from one person. That's just if there's a, a group, like we've been asked to look at Margellans and schizophrenia and lots of other things, and we can come up with what's consistent in that group and then we've got a database and then the computer says oh they fit this database and then go from there but we look at the vocal print using a computer program called Abacus that we built and that's available free for people on our website too and the booklet's there for them to be able to use it so they take a 30 second vocal sample and translate it into numeric data and the numeric data correlates that to, um, I, I can't say diseases, distress. Like in looking at um, a database, we have templates for things like arthritis and breast cancer and there's total uh, consistencies for cancer. You're looking at calcitonin, catalase, and vitamin A. Those are the three things that are consistent with almost every cancer. Then fast acting cancers are arachidonic acid and hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, not only get too technical here, hydrogen peroxide faults on arachidonic acid and creates cancer food called 5-HETE. And we have the databases for all of these. And we can look at diabetes or eczema or how they use fatty acids or they have inflammation, insomnia, macular degeneration we have hundreds of these databases that the computer will pop up and say oh this matches okay what about uh, are you do you look at um, sort of remedies that are out there I, I don't know if you're familiar with Jim Humble and MMS uh, we are and we can test people because some people can tolerate that some people can't so we can do pre and post how that is an influencing someone's vocal print is it causing it to go into coherence is it causing it stress so again this little abacus program you can use to test those kinds of things okay very good uh and what about music in other words different kinds of music have you also tested music and its effect on the body we have but not to the extent that i would like because i'm just musically ignorant there is a woman called Jill Matson that works with us that has been testing music on people. Um, we have several practitioners that are trained that specialize in using music uh, to help people and to tone with them and to teach them to tone their own sounds. You know, we're a very mechanistic way to do it. And my wish for the world is that everybody learns to use their own sounds and they never need me. Okay. But some people just don't have the time or the energy to do that, so we fall back and use the computer. Well, uh, my, you know, I, I've, I have worked as a healer, and my understanding of disease anyway is that it does not, its last stage is actually materialization in the body. So um, what you seem to be, um, you know, and you can, you can kind of correct me or, or clarify this, if you will, um, in other words, you're looking at what the actual body is is reflecting, but the the disease is at, it is often takes place uh, in the etheric or other levels, and also uh, permeates the mind, and may not necessarily be reflected in the voice. Well, it is in the programs that we've created because we look at different ranges. For instance, when you hear something, that's 20 to 20,000 cycles per second. That's in a range that the brain interprets as auditory input. When you look at your eyes, oh, what is it, 350 trillion to 700 something trillion cycles per second, a different range. Um, so that's interpreted as a visual input. It's like octaves of 440, 880 half of that, double that, 220. So the different ranges tells us whether or not this is an emotional issue, a genetic issue, and we look at the ranges through the brain 
and see where this really came from and we can look at root cause and we go to the form of root cause. I'm going to give you an example. A psychologist sent us a young man said he doesn't have he he doesn't have any more money. I can't see him anymore. You guys take him. So he has problems with his mother and totally emotional. So we print and he didn't seem to have a lot in his emotional range or octave, but I went ahead and gave him the frequencies anyway and nothing happened. There was no course of events that showed he was changing. So I divided that in half down to a a structural issue and gave it to him. No, it didn't work. I divided it in half again, got to a chemical nutritional uh, range, and it ended up being a, a form of B12 that his body was not processing. He couldn't even talk about the problems with his mother. couldn't even remember them once we got his doctor to give him some B12 shots. So even though the symptoms were interpreted as emotional, they were really nutritional by their root. Interesting. Okay, and you're saying that he then got better? Yes. Okay. So we Uh, want to look at the octaves. Okay, if, uh, let me, let me ask you this. If you're actually looking at people and you're, you're saying, you say you tested so many people and now you have a certain range at which this falls into a slot called, whether it be cancer or some other disease, then what about the notion that if you're just kind of playing devil's advocate here, if you're, range is taking a range from a group of people that you haven't encountered before, you know, in other words, you haven't got a certain other group, population group, you may be diagnosing what appears to be cancer in one group, but could be something else completely different in another group. I'm just throwing this out there. In other words, because people are so different and, uh, and, and also the, well, what I understand is bloodlines and you might say DNA can be so completely different in different groups that diagnosing, I'm just concerned about diagnosing, for example, based on a general sample of what has worked in the past might not be accurate if your sampling doesn't come from a certain, you know, different kind of a group. Well, bioacoustically speaking, almost everything is something else. So we look at what the muscle is by that frequency, what the nutrients, what the genetics. For instance, if you can't open a jar very well, that could be low zinc because zinc controls the the same frequency as zinc controls the muscle, that big muscle of the thumb. So we give you some peanuts that's full of zinc and see if that will uh, will help it. Or we look at the frequency of zinc and see what's going on. But if we're looking at, say, a group of youngsters as opposed to a group of 60-year-olds, certainly we're going to look at that differently. So we look in groups because for one person for high blood pressure, it could be palmitic acid, and the next person it could be sulfur, um, or the next person oxygen, and those are very related frequencies. Fibromyalgia is one of them. When you look at fibromyalgia, It's usually an issue with not getting rid of lactic acid or some kind of um, trash out of the muscles. So in order to get rid of lactic acid in the cells, some people need calcium and pyruvate together, and some people need pyruvate and lactic acid together, and the next person may need a detrashing or detoxification frequencies to get rid of oxytocin that they had when they were pregnant. But they're all very similar frequencies and based on their complaints and based on what else is going on in the chart, that's the way we would look at it. We wouldn't... Go go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish your your sentence there. We... Oh, okay. Uh, Well, come right back. Sherry and Simi, this... Hi, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Sherry Edwards. Uh, Sherry, just before the break, we were sort of uh, interrupted 
I think you you were uh, about to answer a question that I'd asked you. Um, you were you were sort of interrupted in midstream there. I think about differences in other people. For instance, males and females. A male has a cremaster muscle that helps support the scrotum. Females don't have that. So if that came up on a report, we wouldn't consider that. Uh, males don't have breast tissue, so we're going to look at it that way. But if somebody came in with hemorrhoids, there's a certain group we look at. So they came in with schizophrenia. There are certain computer softwares that we look at, and they'll lead us to the next place if they don't have a high enough score that says there's an underlying something else. What was the lady? Uh, she came in for something, and it was really allergies. I can't remember what she came in originally, but everything pointed to allergies, and, and she had an intense amount of mold going on in her home, and that was what was causing all the rest of the cascade to go on. So okay. we have seven... Just out of curiosity, how did you find out she had mold in her home? Because her vocal print showed an architecture of mold, something that we have seen as mold and traced down as mold. That's a very obvious architecture. Okay. Uh, is it possible, though, that certain things that might be considered... Um, unhealthy for one group of people might be healthy for another. The reason I'm bringing this up is I'm thinking of radiation. I've actually yes. done uh, a show with some people that are uh, feel that they are better off. Um, they actually are eating things like ura uranium and other um, irradiated um, you know, metals and things. Um, they're from Russia, and and at least the female uh, grew up uh, near Chernobyl, um, and it it appears to have changed their biology in essence. And so I'm just wondering. Uh, I I I believe that this planet is being uh, purposely turned into uh, the whole thing is being terraformed, so that another race will be more comfortable here. And that involves uh, radiation as well as uh, methane. Um, so I am wondering if, uh, just out of curiosity, whether you've come across anything like this where something that you thought was detrimental might not be detrimental to certain groups of people. I did have to look at their vocal print. I have a friend who wears around mercury and handles it all the time and swears that it makes him feel better. And we did pre and post, and, and sure enough, it's somehow supportive to her his body. Uh, but we've not tested a group from Chernobyl, um, or the, a big group. You know, there's people out there who are saying that these autistic kids are being bred to be dumbed down and just sit in a room and, and not uh, question. And there's absolute consistencies in that group uh, but there's some outliers at the same time and we try to trace those down I can't think of any group that's very consistent that we, we've we worked with that would be out of the norm we've had people who claim to have um, implants and we sent them on to a psychologist uh, to get x-rays because we couldn't order them and sure enough they did have an implant and they had some odd things in their vocal prints so okay. yeah, well, I guess uh, there are many many people at this point that have implants so is this something that you're just starting to consider you, you know what I'm saying in other words uh, perhaps many of the people you've been dealing with I'm also concerned that people might come to you that consider themselves ill but people that are, don't come to you, in other words, aren't coming to you, so you're not getting any information from them. Uh, we have practitioners around the world that are sending in information. And when we put an ad in the paper, we wanted a healthy person. We uh -huh. couldn't find any. Everybody had something <laughs> wrong with That's them. That's my point. That's my point. In other words, you know, it, it, it's, it is very interesting, um, the whole diagnosis or the idea of sickness and, and what one person considers sickness or even one, one person considers health. 
versus what someone else might consider health, and so on. Um, and then that also being a changing norm because uh, of of the way our society is is being run right now. Uh, it, anyway, uh, it, it you know I, I don't want to sort of distract you from from where you're going with all of this. I do see I am looking at your uh, sort of evaluation of the Gulf oil spill and your efforts in that area um, to to possibly create something that would address the general symptoms of that the people that are being spo- exposed to to that sort of core exit and and so on. And it also says. Um, you talk about rife because I was wondering about the rife machines and and how that relates to what you're doing. They're different octaves and they're digital. It it's along the same line. His his work has been distorted so much down through the ages. If you look at the original information, it originally was to deal with killing pathogens, and you really need frequencies that high to kill a pathogen but you don't need a frequency that high to energize a muscle. So there's a lot going on. We work with a lot of people who use Rife machines and beam rays. And Our next big project is on Fukushima, so we may find some of what you're looking for with that in um, bringing all of these together. A lot of the Fukushima people are getting um, leukemia. So we're looking to train people to do that. That's our next free class for the public. Um, we have charts also on our um, website that people can download and test themselves and see if they have these frequencies and stress and look at the nutritional antidotes and competitors for exposure. So we may have some strange aberrations come through that especially for the people on the West Coast that are just being bombarded. But I also believe in mind over matter. And if people say, I can eat this arsenic and it will just be plentiful for my bones and I'll excrete the rest of it, I believe in mind over matter. Most of us don't have that that much control, but I've seen it happen. I've seen people stick um, knives and stuff through their skin and not bleed. It's It's phenomenal what the mind can do. I guess... What I'm offering is the lazy way out. Just use the computer. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, you know, obviously you have some special gifts, though. Uh, and, and healing is one aspect of what you're able to do. I'm thinking that there may be some other uh, sort of not maybe as obvious areas. Uh, but I, I do want to also point out that the Gulf oil spill also deals with what we know of as black nano oil and Mm -hmm. this is an AI um, self-aware substance which is not uh, sort of the same thing perhaps as typical oil and so uh, you know if for example if you don't know that or the people that you're working with don't know that they're not going to know what to test for they're not going to know you know what they're dealing with. Are you familiar with the, for example, the Marconi scientists? There were 25 of them that that died in the most bizarre ways possible, and they all dealt with this substance. No, my only dealing with it was to test it and see what its frequencies were, and then look at it in terms of what that frequency meant, and it was the activator for dinghy fever. So we wrote another paper that there was going to be a surge of dinghy fever, but I didn't know how these other guys died. I'd be interested to know what was going on with them. Um, I, I just didn't know about it. We yeah, published no, the all the antidotes for the Corexit and what was going on, so that information's out there. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, now, we are going to take calls uh, this time, and it is, uh, I'm just looking at the time here, so uh, I'm going to give out the number, and uh, do you mind taking callers? No, that that's fine. Okay, uh, because we have, it is a two-hour show, but for the last uh, 45 minutes, we, we will try to take calls from the audience or questions that come into the chat, 
There's a chat room that's associated with this radio show as well. So they can either type their question in uh, the chat and then it gets posted here in my Skype and then I can read it aloud and we can we can see if you you can answer it. And then if people want to call in, uh, the phone number is 310-421-4053. Or they can Skype uh, Freedom Screen 2. So it's the word Freedom Screen, S-C-R-E-E-N, and the number 2. And that's that's for people that want to use Skype. So I uh, just wanted to interject that. Um, this is very interesting. And I think when you get into the Fukushima, I know that we were initially connected because uh, Richard Allen Miller um, sort of forwarded some information about your work to me and I, I thought it was uh, fascinating so I invited you on the show but um, I, I, I believe you'll be working to some degree will you be working with him on this uh, getting involved in the Fukushima sort of examining all of that we are examining it but not through him okay um, we've not been invited to join him but it would be interesting Okay, well, I mean, he, you know, he's not a doctor, he's a physicist, but uh, <laughs> he, I, and I don't know, you know, he's, in other words, he's concerned as a, sort of a, as an activist, as a concerned citizen, getting involved in raising awareness about the Fukushima. I don't know what, how your organization is actually interacting with the whole issue. Um, I've done several interviews with people about Fukushima and what's going on there. It is a... Uh, it is fascinating what's going on, not just with Fukushima, however. Apparently, there are a number of nuclear plants that are in various stages of dangerous um, you know, emissions and, and possibly meltdown, That some of which we know about and some that we don't, um, or that, that it's being hidden from the public. So the radiation that is the levels that we're finding and hearing about are not just from Fukushima. Yes, we're looking at, at food and x-rays and TSA and uh, we actually have one just for Fukushima and then another one called Radiation Plus. But we're mainly looking at the evaluation before and after some kind of intervention or the degree of um, destruction by looking at the vocal prints and looking at the consistencies of the vocal prints to try to come up with antidotes. Okay, and this is where I would also wonder for whether or not, for example, if you're analyzing vocal prints of adults exposed to Fukushima and also children, because children may be responding differently, especially if their DNA is different. Um, and there's a high degree of possibility that with the, the number of children that are coming into incarnation at this time that are gray human hybrids, that the gray human hybrid children will have a resistance to the uh, radiation or an ability to deal with it in a completely different way than the other children um, and adults. And so I'm just sort of highlighting that for something for you to consider. I would like to have a clean room where we could subject people to some of this. I, I try to get in touch with airports and do before and after um naked screenings but I couldn't get anybody to cooperate oh, so yeah. there's just not there's just not enough of us to go around we just need more people trained well uh, we can certainly raise awareness through this show and I'm sure others that you, you could do um, it is an absolutely fascinating and very important subject I would think uh, what the investigation you're doing and there's no doubt about it that uh, it's it's a very advanced way of looking at health uh, and healing, um, as well as, as as sort of determining, I guess, through, you know, meet pe members of the media who are telling the truth. Now, along those lines, we have someone who is asking, how exactly did you go about testing Hillary and Obama? We used their uh, presentation from when the, they brought the soldiers back, where they were making these speeches that... Um, the U.S. had nothing to do with this. It was a video being blamed, which we all know in the last couple of days have just been fell through the cracks. So we took the video 
took it apart, uh, separated their voices, uh, screened it, took out the garbage, and we're not really looking at the frequencies, but the distances between the frequencies, which pretty much stay the same, if we were looking at um, the microphone here, it might be slightly different from another microphone. So we found a way to look at the distances between the frequencies, and then we subjected their voice to the abacus program that is in um, on the site waiting for people, and then we also used the nano voice. So, do they want to know what was going on with Obama's voice? We just uh, did cursory evaluations. Sure. I, well, I'm sure that everyone would like to know. Uh, so, go go right ahead if you have something more to say about that. Okay. Um, for Obama, the overt perspective was intellectual justice and ego. So, intellectual from a mental perspective, he wanted justice. Major emphasis, he's left brain, intellectual, um, he overemphasized my way, uh, attitude of bullying, when you consider the double average of his ego, there was some showing of caring for the masses. Least emphasis was carrying out plans to a positive and useful conclusion. Let's see, find Hillary's here. It might be before this one. Hillary's was um, intellect for a planned purpose, major emphasis, hold the right brain, intellectual perspective, presenting a plan using words that are not balanced with management view. The notes of E and A sharp are not balanced, indicating deception. Lost emphasis, she had very little ego, so she's doing it for someone else, where um, lost em no emphasis on helping others no emphasis on outcomes that would help everyone. Uh, she did want a useful physical outcome, but it was all from intellect. If people want a copy of this, um, they can jump on our website or just. I have an email. It's just Sherry Edwards, Sherry with an A, S H A R R Y Edwards at Gmail. Real easy to remember. This is about a ten-page paper here, so I'm looking at Susan Rice. Major emphasis. Um, Go I, ahead. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you here because we're gonna run into limited time, and I think we're gonna have a, an interruption. But, um, and and you could continue on briefly if if you have profiles, for example, uh, do you have George Bush there? Because I'm uh, sure we people we do. We'd have to dig it up. But everybody right. was lying about Benghazi except the guy on 60 Minutes that they disgraced. Everybody was lying but him. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Is there any um, other information that you've ever analyzed? For example, have you analyzed NASA when they make uh, statements to the public about things that are going on in our skies, etc.? I have a whole section on UFOs and several of the astronauts if you want me to dig those up on break. Sure. I, I think people would be interested. Uh, I was actually also talking about, um, for example, what NASA is currently saying about things like ISON or other incoming bodies. I have not done anything about that, but if people will send me the links, I will certainly do it. We do this on um, our show about truth, that's one of the things we want to do is to out people and expose what the truth really is. And so most of our um, information content comes from people's requests. Okay, very good. And then we post it on the site. Someone is asking about radionics, uh, the effectiveness and how it works. Uh, are you familiar with, for example, the use of holograms and, uh, and radionics? Yes, and I have a wonderful story about radionics. would we'll probably get interrupted. But I was at a conference, and I cut my toe really bad, six stitches. And my roommate was Ludi Larson, who is a great radionics teacher. She said, oh, let me give you a frequency. And she gave me one, and it took away my pain. And I went down to the floor, and someone said, oh, you got this big bandage on your foot. What happened? Let me give you a frequency for the pain. And it was different. 
and the second and the third person gave me frequencies and they were different and I thought I got a research project here so I went back and I took a picture a printout of their voice and looked at their primary frequency and when I subtracted their primary frequency most of the frequencies were the same so with radionics the person is part of the broadcast which I think is brilliant and lovely way for God to arrange things <laughs> Okay, well, I might actually have a different point of view of that because if the person who is administering the radionics has, you know, issues of their own, isn't mm -hmm. it possible they might overlay with, uh, you know, their treatments with sort of um, negativity or something that isn't healthy? Absolutely, but take into consideration Reiki healers. We take prints before and they're different. We take prints after and they're pretty much the same frequency except if you've got somebody not compatible and then they'll scatter them. But a lot of people are too polite to say, no, I don't like your energy. Go away and, and don't beam me. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we've done a lot of things with that trying to see where that is. But yes, um, we've had to kick people out of the program because they insisted that everybody was sexually molested when they were kids, you know, and that was their thing. It it just wasn't present in the people they were looking at. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, do you worry about that with your own work? Hello, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Sherry Edwards. Uh, she is a person who is, I, I'm not sure, do you consider yourself a scientist? I mean, you're classified that way on your website, but, but do you actually consider yourself a scientist? Well, I research and find answers and look to blend ancient and science together. I haven't had official schooling. My advanced degrees are in curriculum and instruction, although I have a lot of information about um, dietetics, and, and that was one of my undergraduates. Um, am I a scientist? Well, define as scientist. They look for answers, then yes, I am. That we all are. Sure. Do I have a Do I have a degree that says I'm a scientist? No, do I have awards that say I've done scientific research? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so my last question right before the break was we were talking about uh, the tendency for professionals or health professionals to have overlays, and I was just wondering whether you worry about that in your own work or if you feel that you're um, sort of compensating for any of your own sort of uh, screening or, or, or filtering process by having uh, large samplings of people? Well, there are certain sounds that I know one will run me to the bathroom. The, you know, I just learned that through the, throughout the years. But there are times, there's a lot of doctors that come in here and, and bring their patients and ask for information, including very, very famous people that uh, deal with Dr. Oz that you would recognize in a minute. But while I'm talking to these people, and this is the esoteric part of what I do, sometimes they'll ask me a question and I won't know the answer to it. But instantly, I'm over in the corner watching my body answer the question. And then I go back and look it up and, and test it out, and sure enough, it's true. And I've never understood that till Sylvia Franck wrote a book called The Tree of Life and the Holy Grail. And in there, she said, Sherry Edwards is a modern keeper of the Holy Grail information. And that's down through that Templar line, that healing line that comes from the beginning centuries when they use herbs and frequencies and healing and voice. And I think we have forgotten a lot of it. And I think somehow I'm unconsciously tapping in to some stream of consciousness that I don't know because I keep this Avon soap in my in my shower because the ideas come to me when I'm taking a shower I write them all down on the wall in this colored soap and sure enough I go look them up and there it is it's it's combining things in a very unusual way it's not something that is in science or part of science but 
a little off to the left or right or adding to what's already here. So I just consider myself lucky that I can tap into that. Uh, I'm a water person, and so I drink a lot of water and sprinkle myself when I'm uh, feeling somebody else's energy, much like a Reiki practitioner would clear themselves. So it's a combination of old and new, and I'm not quite sure what it all means. I'm more concerned about getting enough trainers out there and enough clinicians to help people more than I am worried about how this is affecting my life. My two biggest complaints is I don't have time for my family and my children, well, three, and my own health. I neglect my own for the good of the people. Yes, I, I think I picked up on that. Um, can can you tell me the name of that book? Because it sounds quite fascinating, and I, I would like to find it. The Tree of Life and Holy Grail okay. by Sylvia Franck, F-R-A-N-K-E. A very sweet lady. Okay, very interesting. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, hold on one second here because we may have some... In fact, we do have other people that are uh, asking questions here, so I want to be able to grab them. Um, There's a question your, in in the chat. Um, yes. Uh, well, there are a few of them. So just I'll just go down the list here. Um, is your free class via the Internet, or do you have to attend in a physical class? You can do either, or a lot of the free classes are on video on our site so you can just go use them anytime you want okay, but if great. you want to do the two day you can do that online or the five day professional one that teaches you to teach this and go back to your community and teach it um, either one What we, we have cameras in the classroom, we have cl cameras in the lab and if it isn't clear enough we've made videos and people get a class kit with these videos and they can also do internships and research projects and there's enough free software to get them started okay uh, and they want to know if anyone has tried to stop you since you may interfere with their profits absolutely and that's why we try to be careful most of the time they're using taxes a tax we've been audited for eight years uh, we just had to go to court for uh, the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services wanted to collect unemployment on our bank deposits. So it's why I've had to do a lot of um, legal training on my own, and we do have a corporate attorney who helps us, but it's it's that kind of garbage coming after us for the same thing three and four times in a row. It happens continuously. Or another thing that's happening that I heard you talk about on one of your shows is there are people who train people to put negative things on the internet and then they approach us about pay us three thousand dollars and we'll take it off. So <laughs> we've got that kind of trash going on and when we got those people to court they were actually training other people how to extort money. Uh, by putting nasty things on the internet and I just use their audience to say you know this is what we really do go check us out before uh, you consider one person's opinion and I talk about how we took them to court and and they were training other people on how to extort money so yeah incredible. Use, um, but we have helped the National Institute of Health and uh, we've decoded uh, ricin we've helped them with things that um, where a sound could uh, scramble a tape uh, we helped them run down that frequency in my voice that was causing that problem um, we did Gorbachev's voice so you can see how old this is we did Riaz's voice and gave them information on how to deal with Mrs. Reagan. Uh, they didn't take the advice. We did Gaddafi's voice uh, about what's going to happen to him. Um, we did, oh, what's the Egyptian guy's name? Um, Mubarak. We did his, uh, Mubarak. Mubarak, yes, we did his voice. 
and said he's going to leave peacefully, but he's going to come back and stab you in the back. Uh, all of those are on our site. So okay. people want our help, um, and we've presented at um, the FDA, but they just say this is not medical go away. Right. Well, uh, maybe someday medicine will uh, will progress. Uh, let's see. People want to know, do you have treatments for HIV and drug addiction? We have indicators for HIV. The consistently see with HIV is a cell salt. See if I can dredge it up from memory. Uh, it's a um, cell salt that causes cellulite. Selenium is the other piece of it. And if they could write to me, I'll dig up the literature for them. We don't do a lot with HIV um, patients because I find them uncooperative. We did two or three projects, and they just are, the majority of them were uncooperative. What do you call it, uncooperative? Uh, Noncompliant. And they just challenged us so uh, we still have some practitioners who are dealing with them, but I want somebody that will follow through and give me data. And if somebody doesn't give me data, they're useless to me because I want that data so I can share it with other people. So HIV and what? Uh, drug addiction. We have a program for drug addiction. Um We haven't done a lot with it. We created it for a prison program but they lost their funding. So we do have the program. I don't know of any of our practitioners. Yes, I do. We have one that's using it for for her son. Um, but it has all the chemicals and how to help them get off and some of the herbs that help. We're doing a big project on marijuana and trying to look at the oils in marijuana, which we really think is what's helping the pain. So we're looking in every direction. At the same time, we don't want to step on anybody's toes. We want to add to information. The the people I'm most afraid of, I shouldn't say afraid, concern, is the drug companies. But if they really paid attention, we could help them tremendously. According to their year-end reports, they lose the most money on bad side effects. And so if they ever approach me, I'm going to talk to them about how we can save them money on side effects because we can look at someone's voice and tell whether a medicine is compatible or not. Absolutely. That makes sense. Uh, okay. Someone wants to know, has anyone ever strongly disagreed with what their voice print indicates about them? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Those left brain people. But we just turn around and give it to one of their friends, and they say, oh, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true, (laughs) with a vocal print. Uh, We had one guy that I said, there's some heart issues. You've got some problems. No, no, I'm strong as an ox. And I said, just please go to the doctor and check it out. And sure enough, he had an issue. The biggest one was somebody who was uh, made medical equipment, some that we used, and his name was Mike, and he came to us. He said, what are you using all of these pulse oximeters for? And I showed him, and we did his vocal print, and I said, do you have any thyroid issues? He said, no, 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 nothing. And I said, well, just go have a test run and kind of check it out. And his next-door neighbor was an MD, so they checked it out, and Mike called me and sort of laughing at this stupid, uneducated um, poverty stricken woman trying to do something in southern Ohio and that was his attitude you know nothing's wrong here about a month later he called me from an Atlanta hospital and said they almost took my heart and replaced it because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and I reminded uh, it reminded me I told them what your test said he had had a thyroid storm very hard to diagnose so he considers that we saved his life so he disagreed but that's okay and we had somebody from the Boston Celtics come and try to tell us what a fool we are that we could regrow a kneecap or that we could help with muscle pain and I was like you know I don't want to be a fool can you kind of narrow that down a bit and 
and help me out here but once he saw it work he was on our side forever wonderful okay uh have you ever tested if ESP has a specific frequency and if yes what would that be the specific frequency for ESP is A sharp and it deals with norepinephrine but one of the things that we're looking at for people who are very sensitive is their tolerance levels for uh, blood pressure and sugar all get very very narrow where you might look at somebody for uh, 80 to 120 as normal blood sugar for somebody sensitive intuitive psychic their normals may be 92 to 102 or 94 to 102 so their tolerances get very lev very narrow and the doctors won't deal with that their thyroid goes down so ah you're you're low but they're off the chart for a psychic we wrote a paper about that called uh, when psychic isn't psychic anymore when you're psychic and you know something without knowing how you know it they call it psychic but if we can show how you know it that you have high levels of norepinephrine then it's not psychic anymore because it's not unknown <laughs> okay um someone wants to know where do you get your funding I work hard <laughs> um, most of the we had one project with the army most of the most comes from the money that people pay to take our classes um, we do sell some equipment for people to use um, I was trying to think where else um, that's about it most of it is from class fees uh, and donations, but we give all the donations away in scholarships who, for people who want to take our class. So it's a struggle every week for um, us to even meet payroll, but we've had tremendous offers from other countries, um, millions of dollars worth, but I've turned them down because I understand that whoever controls this technology controls health for the world and it needs to be free and open to the people and I'll, I'll give you an example of something someone did a doctor took our course and we can get rid of heel spurs heel spurs are really a muscle in your hip and we have a frequency for it he took it back to his hospital stuck people in these boots and gives them these frequencies um, and three times and it's $3,500 a piece and insurance pays for it but that's the way they're trying to turn this into some medical thing when really it's much much easier to do and we just have a new computer program that will from beginning to end give people the answer in about 20 minutes of where they need to concentrate we're just releasing that this year the January professional class that's starting on Monday will be the first class that we provided that new software to okay excellent uh, let's see we've got uh, someone wanting to ask how they can make an appointment with you and have their voice print analyzed that's great you can do it free if you want on happy hour on Tuesday evenings from 6 to 7 just go to our site soundhealthoptions.com and go to happy hour and there's an invitation there a standing invitation or if you'd like us to do it privately go to clinical services and it'll say how to send us your vocal print so that we can do an evaluation so we've put it all there on the site for you or people if people can't make their way around the site hey write to me sherry edwards at gmail and I'll get your request to the right people okay uh, I think that's all the questions I think I caught all the questions at least in the chat I, I don't think I missed any of them uh, so at this moment we still have time and uh, I guess I guess we haven't had any callers so uh, just moving on a bit is there anything that you want to talk about um, that has to do with your own sort of um, I guess understanding of this you're, you're talking a bit about the Templars uh, is there anything that you want to tell us about what you understand this sort of um, what I think is probably a lost art 
in a sense. Um, I think so. You know, when you look at Pythagoras, that he heard sounds from everything. But frequency is. And when we went back and decoded oxygen and sulfur and ammonia, we were able to put together a grid. And the frequency of water plus the frequency of nitrogen equals the frequency of oxygen. So like pebbles, uh, waves coming together, I think by frequency this is how our universe was created and as you begin to look at more and more complicated issues or frequencies that come up it goes into cellular um, metabolism it goes into reproduction and we can see that another issue that I think is important for people to know that as we run around the town and this sound is coming out of our ears people can hear that they can't consciously interpret it, but I want to get to the place where private, my rose colored wish, where privacy is thought of as an illusion because people are hearing this sound from you. They just don't know what to do about it. And if we can really get people using this nano voice and say, I don't know what I am. I don't know where I need to go. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, this computer program will tell you just like, the two-page information sheet I sent to you where I took your voice off one of your shows. The biggest thing I want to announce right now for people is that we have a two-day class coming up that will be free. It is on radiation exposure. The software is free. It This usually costs $1,200, but we're doing it because people need it, especially on the West Coast. So the software is free that you'll be using. The textbooks are free. The two-day course is free. You will have to buy a microphone. But we'd like to invite anybody who wants to take that free class with us two days and will teach you how to set up a bioacoustic community, a bioacoustic center where people can come and be tested and check their voice. And then we provide charts for them so that they can help provide the nutrients for people uh, to help antidote this cesium-137 and 134 that's bombarding the West Coast right now, but also cobalt-60, strontium-90, thorium, uranium, xenon, zinc, iodine, plutonium. Those are the worst of them. And we want to have community centers everywhere where this radiation is bombarding people and allow people to have the opportunity to set up these teaching and training communities so that we don't go down the tubes because we're being lied to by these people who say, say nothing in the air that GMO foods are fine our water is fine with all this bleach and garbage vaccinations are fine even though we've proven that they aren't um, they're lying to us and we've got to step out and take the reins and do this somebody had to take the step to provide it and you know people have come back to me and said you know if it's so good why are you giving away for free you know it can't be any good if it's free <laughs> you know okay. Oprah gave away cars people accepted them and people have described what I am as the Oprah of self health so we want to provide this free class to people just let us know you want to be a part of this and if you want to be trainers, that's wonderful. If you want to be a clinician, just let us know, and we'll try to find a way to have you be part of this. And the other thing I want to leave people with is there's nothing good or bad in your vocal print. It's what you do about it that makes the difference. Okay. All right. Well, uh, very good. So uh, thank you so much, Sherry Edwards, for coming on the show. I'd love to do this uh, again sometime and have you back and also give the, us an update about what you're investigating and how this, this, uh, this radiation investigation is doing as well. Um, Carrie, I forgot to tell you something that I, I was supposed to tell you and instructed to tell you. All right. I've got a show on Revolution Radio. And it's oh. going to be Directions for Truth, and we're going to expose people every week, four people. Directions for Truth, we're going to use four people every time we're on the show. And it's Friday 
from 7 to 8. And Kat asked me to announce that on your show, and I nearly forgot. I had a note, but I nearly forgot it. Okay, Friday, 7 to 8. What time? Eastern time is that? That's that's Eastern. So it's 7, 7 to 8 Eastern. Okay, um, because I'm on the West Coast, and maybe some of the listeners are. Uh, and we've certainly got listeners around the world, so it, the time uh, is very important. Okay, yeah, very I'm right good. Be- I'm right before, there's the lady uh, Kerrigan before you. I'm right before that. I wanted to be on the same day as your show, Carrie. <laughs> okay, well, that's lovely. So um, I'm glad to hear that you're going to be doing a show. That's wonderful. Uh, one last question that occurred to me. Uh, what about reverse speech? How do you feel about that? I love reverse speech in David Oates. It's incredible. Very interesting. All right. It okay. doesn't matter what you're saying, it, whether you're crying or laughing or whatever. It just needs to be words or sounds. It just needs to have be sounds. All right. Thank you so much, Sherry Edwards, for coming on the show. And everyone have a great weekend and uh, take care. We're going to go to Sundance next week, uh, the Sundance Film Festival. So if there's anyone out there, uh, you know, look us up while there. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.